Are you back to Benny? Richmond! Back to Richmond. Good boy. I might even let you win for that, mate. Keep going. A left foot oh, oh. You're going oh, forward, yes. Come on. Come on. Good hand. That's it. Nobody That's it. Able to take it. Good work. Good work. Yes, yes, Good work. Yes, yes, yes. Snapshot. Yes. Home! Yes. It's home! It's home! It's home. It's beat Wayno! Yes, Benny, you beat Wayno! Everyone beats Wayno, do you know that? Here you go, mate. Here's a, an EA Sports cap just for you. Here's an AFL 98 CD-ROM game. There you go. And the footy that we use in all the matches, the Sharon football with the footy frenzy logo on it. Thanks for coming, Benny. Come go. back anytime soon. See you, mate. Bye -bye. See you wow. again. And if you'd like to come to our place and take on another footy frenzy viewer in the Virtual Footy Challenge, here's what you have to do. do. Put your name, age, address and phone number on the back of an envelope and send it to... Footy Frenzy Virtual Footy Challenge, Post Office Box 100, Richmond, Victoria, 3121. Hey, Wayno, looks like you need some more practice. Shane, he's the young boy back for Richmond. I thought I'd give him some confidence, you know? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm better than you at this. I'm here in the Melbourne locker rooms for what we call the Mystery Locker. And what we're going to do is take a look inside this locker, and you're going to have to work out which demon star the locker belongs to from what's inside. So let's take a look, shall we? What do we have here? A white ball. He must be into some other football code. Oh, we've got a couple of CDs in here. The cause. You too. Not bad. Ah, oh, we've got a video on a hat. St. Patrick's Day hat. And the Riverdance video. I wonder if he can dance like them. I'll have to ask him later. Ah, oh, you have to check this out. Brown low medal. That's pretty cool. OK, do you think you know who this mystery locker belongs to? We'll be back shortly to reveal the answer. G'day, Footy Frenzy dudes. Shane here. I'm here with Simon Kenyon-Smith. That's right. That's right, Shane. And he is a dental prosthetist. And if you don't know what that is, neither do I. So we're going to find out. I know it's got something to do with mouth guards, though. Is that right, Simon? That's right. Um, we're registered to do dentures and mouth guards directed to the public. Uh oh We're going to have a dental assistant today, and we're going to find out how big your mouth is and what we can fill it with. We're going to make a mouth guard. Is that right, Simon? That's right. Oh, very nice, Dave. He's been looking after me. How many fillings? There's a couple down the left-hand side there. What did he have for lunch? Uh, garlic. Bit of garlic. Did he? <laughs> OK, so now we've got an idea what size tray is required there, so we select a tray. With the, the mouth guards, I know a lot of people get the top one. Can you get your bottom teeth actually guarded as well? The only time you'd perhaps consider doing a lower mouth guard is if you've caught a, a class three where the jaw is protruding to the yeah. top arch. A bit like Wayne. No. <laughs> but the, the good thing with your mouth guards, you can choose what colours you want too. You can, you can have any colour you like. It's um, they're all Australian made, the material's Australian made. Uh, colour combinations in excess of 200,000. Yeah. So there's uh, you so have your Hawthorne need... colours, you have your Richmond colours, you can have any colour you like. Okay, this is the impression material, it's uh, uh, called alginate. We mix that to a creamy consistency. It's got a bit of a peppermint flavour by the Spearmint, you can smell. Smell it, yes. Anti nausea, though, really. Before we start, Simon, I might just put oh. a little bib on in here. I don't know why you're. He's used to getting. Ah! Oh. Look at oh. He's got to breathe through something. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Oh. First time I've ever seen nothing out of talk. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. Okay. Just make it just nicer on him. Little swallow for me. Let's see. Oh. 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 So we've got the mould of Shane's teeth there. What's the process after that? Okay, now what we do now, we've got to fabricate the mouth guard. We use a pressure technique right. rather than a vacuum technique. That's what we do now. Place the, the model there. And Shane wants a Hawthorne one, so we put that on the equipment. So that's just, that's, that, that's just a cradle. Yeah, that's just a material. Then you can have those in any colour you like. Right. Multi colours, triple colours. Then so we put the heat source on, onto the material. What are the costs like involved? What do they range from? Okay, we range from forty-five dollars up to one hundred and ten dollars. Uh, that's one hundred and ten dollars is for the professional type laminates. Forty-five dollars is for the um, sports guard achiever. So they certainly recommend it. Anyone who plays a contact sport or even a non-contact sport, where there's a possibility of any dental injury. Um, definitely. Yeah, even even you know, squ uh, squash, a lot of players don't use, um, as an example, uh, don't use a mouth guard playing squ uh, squash, but they use eye protectors. Even, even the blokes on the inline skates and skateboard, you see them with the helmets, everything else on, knee protectors, elbow protectors, but no mouth guard. 
<laughs> okay, so now it's plunging. The uh, pressure's been applied to the material. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And I'll run it good. There you go. So that's what we've got now. So now that has to be trimmed up. That's only the first stage. It's a multi-laminated, so it's, that's the first stage. Now we've got this trimmed up here, the Hawthorne one. Is that the finished product? No, oh. it's not almost there. It's even got my name on it. How cool. Anyhow, what do we do next? Okay, next step is uh, to place another layer of material uh, over the surface of this, um, this mouth guard here. Why do we do that for? Added strength. Okay, so same procedure again. Over the heat source. How young uh, do people use mouth guards? Or how old do you have to be? To oh, anyone to from pick your cage, as in football. Yeah. Um, but generally six or seven, around that age. It's, uh, wouldn't have gone much younger than that. What does it actually do? What, what does a mouth guard protect okay. against? A uh, mouth guard protects against, obviously, tooth loss, soft tissue damage, um, concussion. It can reduce concussion or the chance of concussion. How? By absorbing the impact. Instead of your teeth coming together and clattering together, uh, it's, you've got that layer of material there, soft material, absorbs the impact. It's a bit like a cappuccino, isn't it? It is, it's a bit of froth and chocolate on top. There we go. And there we have the finished, the finished product. product. There you go, sir. One mouth guard delivered. Cool. Look at them all. There you go, Shane. You're what a variety. variety. From your club colours. Don't bite my finger. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. What is it looking, Myron? Oh, uh, I don't know. What do you reckon? <laughs>